Thompson is known for her appearances on Made in Chelsea alongside her brother Sam. It's been a traumatic few years for Louise who went through severe trauma after nearly dying whilst giving birth to her son Leo. As well as the mental scars, Louise was left with a stoma and has no idea if she'll ever be able to have another baby. Despite all of that though, she finally feels able to say she is lucky and she's here now alongside her fiance, Ryan. Woo! Welcome to you. Um, you have both come such a long way and I'm guessing you're still very much in a period of recovery because you've both been through this harrowing experience. I think that's probably the only way of describing it. Um, this experience nearly claiming your life twice, like we said, Louise. And this all started with an emergency cesarean back in November 2021, didn't it? And that was the beginning of this whole episode chapter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd been really lucky prior to that. I'd, I'd lived a, you know, a, a wonderful life. I was incredibly fit and healthy, you know, almost like an advocate for health. We, we ran a couple of fitness businesses. Um, so nothing really could have prepared me for that. And I was very, very unlucky. <laughs> mm. um, I went through a lot of gross medical trauma. Um, I lost, I think over a year's period, I lost 12 and a half litres of blood, which is, wow. you know, three times mm. my body, you know, the amount that is contained in my body. And, and I was very sick and I came very close to dying. Um, and there are many things about it that have left me scarred. I think one of, one of which was the fact that I was awake for a really long operation, which is just not something that people mm. regularly have to experience. And, you know, Ryan, my amazing partner, was there with me witnessing that and it's been a really crazy journey um you know once we kind of i spent a month in hospital i spent a, a chunk of time in intensive care and and that's an alien world in itself and you know there's there's recovering physically but then when you go home and you have to deal with the emotional the mental trauma that follows your brain hasn't had time to grapple with what has happened mm. like you can't process it and nothing prepares you for the for the PTSD, the, mm. the post -trauma. And was the pregnancy, how was the pregnancy leading up to that moment? Was that just fine or did you have a hard pregnancy as well? It, you know what, it was okay. I think I'm very small, pregnancy is tough anyway. It's an inflammatory condition. It's mm. really, it's a lot for, for any woman's body. Um, I did suffer with some anxiety and I was involved in a house fire about a month before giving birth. And so that really kind of um, added to the heightened anxiety. Mm. So I did really push to have a C-section because I just wanted that one element of control. Mm, yeah. And that's where I felt as though I really wasn't listened to. And it was really, you know, really challenging. And I'm a fairly assertive person, but I just couldn't advocate for myself. And so I even, you know, brought Ryan along to some of the midwife appointments with me to try and push to get what I thought that I needed. And they didn't want to put you forward for a C-section? No. Mm. It's really tough. So how are you really feeling, Ryan, through all of this? It must have been so frustrating for you as well. It was, yeah. And uh, there's, there's a lot to unpack from my perspective. A lot of what you've seen in the book and heard from Louise on podcasts, um, it's come from her perspective. But to be truthful, I've got so much to, to, sh to share and mm. say on it. Um, it's difficult to know where to start with it, but it was, it was a really horrendous chapter for me, for both of us. Um, and to, to witness everything that I saw and, and try my best to kind of steady the ship for both Leo and Louise. Uh, incredibly difficult. So, to be honest with you, Louise is now up and running and she's really back to her old self. And I'm probably lagging a little bit with my own recovery. Mm. And I think I probably... I set myself up for that deliberately in some way because I just wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. she was... Mm. She was healthy and happy again, which she is, thank God. So, just got to work on myself a little mm. bit now. Because no, you were kind of holding the fort down. Are you now yeah. processing everything yeah. that you think you've kind of witnessed and been through? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Years? I definitely am, definitely am. And I can tell just talking about it now, the emotions really still have yeah. a really mm. tight grip on me, um, which I guess is understandable, but there's, there's some work to be done from my side, yeah. You sit with this little baby who, yeah. who yeah. sadly was also rushed into intensive care. That's so right. you're going through all of this harrowing, horrific moment, mm. and the little baby then is being taken off to intensive care as well. Yeah. And you're the one trying Between to just two. literally keep these Quite two most precious yeah. things in your life alive. Yeah. Literally, I mean, at one point in the first operation of many, I was quite literally snipping the umbilical cord here and Leo's blue and kind of misshapen and, and Louise is white as a sheet with quite mm -hmm. literally blood all over the floor and sheets were up. And I, oh at one point, I thought I was going to go home alone, which yeah. is something that is... Um, 
It's mm. hard to remove from your brain, you know? Mm. I think I, I, for personal reasons, have followed your, your story from, from the beginning and I'm thrilled that you're on here talking so openly about it. I had a very well-documented um, severe postnatal depression. I was hospitalised twice. And so I was fascinated how you were dealing with and felt so sorry for the pair of you. Because mm. I think that it's very easy when you're pregnant to be sucked into the front of these parent and baby magazines, which is all that people tell you about. Mm. I mean, there has been huge advances in the 35 years since, since I had Matty. But my sympathy was, of course, with you, but also with you, Ryan, mm. because I know what that's like to put your partner's health before your own yeah. and how my own ex-husband was impacted right. almost after the event, like, yeah. you, like you're mm. saying. It yeah. took him some time because mm. he was going to the pub and everybody was going, oh, go and buy her a new dress. Oh, she'll be fine. Well, it's hard. We've all had children. You know, there's mm. all of that attitude which mm. yeah. very much prevailed then and I know still does to this day. And you also said in your book, Louise, how it impacted on the whole family. Mm. which was something that I relate, related to. Your mum and you had to have a real come to Jesus sort of talk about it. Yeah, it, honestly, it was like a riptide. I mean, a, like a tidal wave, the impact was, it affected our relationship, mm. my relationship with my son, my relationship with my, my parents, you know, your relationship with my parents, with my brother who lived yeah. next door, who obviously, you know, now we've all worked really hard to kind of repair everything and become a unit again. It really was a case of a jigsaw puzzle of 10 million pieces being shattered and then piece by piece every day, you know, building that back up again. Um, I, you know, it's brought me and my mother a lot closer. Lovely. Which is one of the, there have been some amazing things that have come mm. out of the back of this awfully traumatic period of time. But I think no one really knew how to support me yeah. Yeah. because no one was trained in that. No one knew who to call. We didn't know. You know, I was lying there and, you know, and I'm sure you will be able to relate. I, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't function at all. It was as though it was, you know, the lights were on, but no one was home. It's Someone had turned the dimmer switch on my entire life. And I know it was World Suicide Prevention Day yesterday. It's, it's not just buy a new dress, have a cup of tea, mm. have a bath. The colour goes out of your life. It's the it fact that you feel nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Your sensor, all of your senses are off. You're like completely... I couldn't love my child. All, all the love, the love went. Mm. It, it's, yeah. just, it's frightening. I had to say things that I wasn't feeling. I've just mm -hmm. got goosebumps. I would say to Ryan, I want to get better because I love you and I love Ryan. I didn't feel, didn't feel it. it. I didn't feel it. I wanted to die. But I just said, I was like, if I can just pretend, then maybe, you know, I'll get there one day. Um, so it was a really, really hard time for everyone. And Ryan has very little medical experience. So he was having to advocate. I couldn't really speak for a, a period of time. Like I was almost non verbal. Almost catatonic, yeah. Hence yeah. I, I could just write. That was the only way I could communicate. So I, you know, and have put part of that into the book. Um, but, you know, he had to, Ryan had to, had to make all of the phone calls, the appointments for me. He had to speak on my behalf. It was, it was, it was hard. And, and I think, you know, my family as well, they would do everything that they could. Um, yeah. It's, it's so much to even, like, yeah. to even know fully how to react to it, because it's, like you say, it's so heavy, and I think you're so brave, both yeah. of you talking about it. It's going to help so many people. Hope so. Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Another thing that you've opened up about now is the fact that you are living with a stoma bag and you're doing so in such an amazing way on social media and going to normalise that for so many people because there's so much ignorance around it mm. and also so much stigma and shame. And how has that changed your life and what has the experience been like for you? Well, it's really interesting because, you know, just from the, the kind of medical experience, I've had a much more positive experience with this in terms of the operation, how yeah. it was all managed. Like, the care has been really incredible and I've been really supported by the NHS and I've got an amazing team of stoma nurses who are there to help me. Um, my, you know, and, and I feel like we went into it with a little bit more knowledge than it being pu a pure emergency. Yeah. Um, it's changed my life for the better. I can live now, I'm not running to the bathroom. Mm. You know, it's, it's a small price to pay. Yes, I have a grey bag glued to my stomach. I never anticipated that I would be one of those people. Yeah. I never saw it. You never it think me. it's going to be you, do you? You never think it's going to be you. And that's why you have to be kind to everybody. I mean, I've had the inflammatory policies for six years, but I still, I never thought it would be me. Yeah. Like, we never thought it would be me. No. And, 
and but now you know here I am and I, I do want to normalize it because you know there are people out there and I had someone message me a couple of days ago saying that they've lived with one for 10 years this beautiful girl and she's never bought a bikini before and now she was like you know what I'm gonna buy yeah. four bikinis and I'm yeah. just gonna do it I can completely understand how difficult it is to talk about it but talking is helping you we know that mm. and and the book is very much part of that lucky learning to live again that is out right now we're hopefully going to hear you in your own podcast yes. very yes. soon yes uh, he said she said so you've lots of things you want to say and there's a lot of support that you want to offer out to other parents who have also lived through similar situations. And of course, if there's anything that we've talked about today and it's affecting you at home, you can find help and guidance on our website at itv.com forward slash helplines. Ryan, Louise, thank you very much. Thank you.